So these are the biggest thing I have, and the whole reason I kind of wanted to vent and how I can tie all of this into it is if you're trying to determine whether you're chasing versus following the trend, etc., is essentially, if you ever heard ICT talk, talk about the draw on liquidity? Well, draw on liquidity being, you know, what's price moving towards? So an example we have today, NASDAQ, doesn't matter what, but literally anything. When I was this, was, I was watching price. Admittedly, right? You were watching me watch it, and I was even talking about you know, in the open, running the buy side because the screenshot we were like here. No, send like before midnight. Yes, yeah, so we were like here. Some shit like this, and if we are gonna go short, we need to remember that um probably going to take early people out that's like the kind of the idea and the goal of like price you know if the move is going to be correct they're going to take the easiest people out before you know kind of how um oh wait, this is a screenshot yeah i still have it open yeah so i took the screenshot this was like one right so this is what i posted on my discord but when we were looking at something like this at the very least we had this kind of draw and this is basically what we were talking because we took you can see kind of we took sell side right here we swiped it we sell, sold off a new hard i went long in here if you remember on that 312 i was just targeting this imbalance but we are essentially moving in towards this because even remember if we know that if we know we're going to be going long it's going to do some kind of stop out of some kind of people like say here like right here before it actually makes the move so we need to expect this very very similar things we have kind of buy stops here and these like equal highs and we got definitely some buy stops here because you know, definitely a clean pivot that's being designed here so you should at the very least expect something like this or one of these to be taken so then you can continue so when i'm referring to the draw and liquidity and what are you price and what are you pricing towards you need to essentially ask yourself is has that draw that is whatever it is hasn't been met yet because if it hasn't so what you can do is essentially YOLO stop it, meaning you just market order it and you stop even if even though the risk to reward is dog shit. If you're correct on the direction, the stop loss doesn't get hit, so the stop loss doesn't matter how far it is. Okay. So that's kind of what happened to me today. Is I was I saw the run up at 930 immediately, just pew, did that. And I legitimately because I realized that we weren't I was like, if we're going to mark up, like if we're actually going to mark up just fucking shit on all this stuff, we should trade above this and stay above it. And we never really did. So by the time it was like 940, whatever, I was like, I want, I, I admittedly, I wanted to short this, but it was like 10 something. It was like, I forgot fucking time it was. I was like, it was down to here by the time I was actually looking at it. Cause my, my job essentially starts, like my store opens at 10 that I work at. So, you know, here I can kind of watch stuff, but like by 10 o'clock, like I gotta, gotta, I kind of have to start working. Immediately. So by the time I was here, I was like, well, shit, I don't want to fucking risk this because on my prop firm test, this is like 80 points and 80 points of the NASDAQ is a fuck, you know, it's like 1600. Like that is, that is a daily loss limit style. Like so the risk was too big. So I didn't want to fucking trade it. And this is one of the few times where I was legit. I wasn't not legitimately, but like I was essentially scared to enter because the risk reward was so bad which is a very for me it's a very rare feeling to have like it's a very very few times where i'm scared to enter usually i have no problem entering whether it's smart or dumb usually i'm just like like a fucking rat hitting that dopamine button like i just want to hit the execution button and enter, and enter a trade more times than not right that's it but that's me that's me anyway so when i was like here essentially i know i can't replay because it, it was today but by like 10 o'clock, it's looking kind of obvious what's happening, right? We have this old supply up here from yesterday's open. So you know there's a lot of orders here, for one. You're taking buy side. You're yoinking buy side right here. It's not marked because the indicator. Because the indicator kind of draws the lines. But buy side's getting yoinked again. Buy side gets yoinked again right at 930. It's an immediate rush up higher just to FOMO trap people, right? So by the time I was like down here, 
I was like, well, shit. We're clearly not going to break this. Like, we're going 3-1-2 down right now, right? Even if you just throw it in kind of strat terms, it's just, you're just going 3-1-2. So, kind of goes back into the whole trend following thing is, if this is the draw now, if you hit buy side, hit buy side, hit buy side, and you're now targeting sell side, if you're like here, this is kind of goes into that whole yellow stop thing of, you can you could just YOLO stop it, like, you know, just go short and assume this just never gets hit because this is now your new target. And that's what you need to be asking is, has that target been hit yet? Whatever the draw on liquidity is. And if it hasn't been hit yet, then you're then you're still kind of then you still have can still have confidence in the direction that you're entering. It's like yesterday, admittedly, I took literally the worst short possible in North America. I'm not even kidding. I took the worst possible short on Monday. It was that bad. It was like here. I legitimately sold the bottom of this. I went short with a put for like 80 bucks. It was like the last $80 I had in my account. I went short at, I can show you, I can show you, tell you actually. I went short at literally the worst possible time. Fuck. I don't know if I can find it. Okay. Let me see. Yeah, so I literally went short at. Is this yes? No. Yeah. I went short at 9.49. The, literally the bottom. I legitimately sold the bottom down in here at 9.49. Okay. And then I went long on prop firm. That doesn't matter. Yeah, so nine, th this was 9.49. 9.49 is down here. That is how bad of my entry was. I went short on a put. Yeah, like it was, it was that bad. You can see it right here. I went short on it. The reason I'm telling you that is because by the time, and the reason I exited like four minutes later, because really it's how dark, or no, 12 minutes later, Jesus Christ. Yeah, so I exited immediately after, like 13 minutes, because really it's how bad it was. Because even in this kind of model right here that we had, by the time, this was our kind of our draw on liquidity, right? We purged, we purged the buy side like three times. And we're have the fair value gap be trade up into we're coming down lower. If this is our target, anything from up in here to there, if you haven't hit that target yet, it's okay to sell. It's okay to sell into it. I mean, it's not okay, but you can you know you can yolo stop it essentially because that target hasn't been met yet. So you know that you're not still chasing the move. So I got a bunch of tail. Oh my god, who did that? Anyways, so I literally sold the bottom because by the time the the, the by the time the target was met, there's no reason to enter in that direction anymore. All right? Even if I went short like up in here, it's okay because the likelihood of me coming back up to this high is so low. Yeah, the risk is high, but the chance of me hitting it are so low, it's not going to matter because why am I drawing liquidity is these lows right here. Same thing going in today. I was, we were like here, you know. I was like a little bit after ten. Yeah, it's like a little bit after ten, and I'm like, okay, well, shit, I'm kind of target. Like we got this, we got midnight, we had some old low, we had an old low here as well. So you know, it's kind of like the target hasn't been hit. Oh my god, I need to close the fucking long, dude. Jesus Christ. All right. Oh, I got stopped out of it. Rest in peace. Let me out. Couldn't even close it. Awesome. Oh my god. Anyways, so rip that. I just took a loss live. So, that's like the super important thing is finding out what the draw and liquidity is and, ha and have you reached it yet. Because if you haven't, you're still probably going to move towards it and get there. And because again, if you're, if you're targeting this low, and you're like here, the likelihood of you coming back up here, yeah, the risk is high, admittedly. The risk to reward is dog shit. It's like a fuck, it's like a one to one and a half, if that. Right? But it's so far away that the chances that you hit it, it are, the chances that you come back up to here are so low because you're trying to price down here that it ends up working anyways. That's what you need to ask yourself when you're doing this is like, has that target been hit yet? Because if it has, like I like I did on yes, like I did on Monday, how the target was hit here, these equal lows. By the time you hit it, there's no reason to go in that direction anymore. 
But if you haven't, like say it's 932 and you're still targeting this, well then you just, I'm not saying you can, but you could theoretically YOLO stop it and go for that low because that which, that's what your target is. And if you're going to hit the target, you will, and your stop loss will never get hit because you're going to hit the target first if your target's correct. So. I got it. Does that make sense? I guess my first question. If it does, I can try to explain yeah. it differently. No, I understand. It's. I guess my main problem is at least when I enter some. Well, when I do futures, I always usually have a target. Just when I have equities, not always have a target in mind. So I guess the main part is <clears throat> when trying to follow a trend or get somewhere, I should probably have a target first. Yes, you need to have a target to see if you've reached it yet. But if you haven't, you're still probably going for it. And so All right. you can right. semi you can semi trust up I'm not saying you should every time, but you can trust the process of if I'm going for this low, I will hit this low before I hit this high. And in this case, it does. So even if you you know even if you even if you sold this break and your stops up here, yeah, you're risking, you know, thirty points or whatever. But the likelihood that you hit the that you hit this high is so much lower than you coming down to here that ends up working. Because even if the because the stop even though the stop is there the stop never gets hit so it doesn't matter because it's so far away. Mm -hmm. it, I, short, I shorted Monday. I shorted at nine forty nine at the bottom. I bought a put. I've done that. I literally shorted the bottom. I got out of it at 10.12, like here. Yeah, like 10.12, I got out here. Because I saw the break up over this, and I was like, yeah, I'm done with it. I got out of it like here. But I literally sold the bottom. Because again, my target was hit. So why, so if my target's been hit, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be looking for anything in that direction. Now, I can trade up until that direction has been, until that target has been met, but until I do so, I shouldn't be. But hypothetically, like, when you hit that trade, how do you know it's not going to break down further versus reverse? I mean, this is, I guess, similar to... I don't. You can't. You can't. discussed last time, yeah. You can't. You have to protect yourself with something, either partial or break it even or something, but you can't. There's absolutely no way you can know. That's one thing I've also realized is even... If you were reading my Discord yesterday, I was even kind of talking about the 312 that I I did like here or whatever it was in here. I realized that there was truly nothing stopping me from this coming back up to here and breaking down lower. That is actually what I was intending for to happen. I literally only took the long to hedge it up into here just so I could just so price could do whatever the fuck afterwards. I had no idea it was going to keep just melting up. Zero. Literally my only target was just this gap in the long that I took overnight it was just this gap. That was it. Makes sense. So, you know, there's no way to actually know. Like, if it goes further, great. If it doesn't, okay. Because this is one of the, like, on Monday, it was one of those times where it hit the target, that was it. It was done. Today, it's the target and fucking just destroys itself. I can't tell you which is going to happen. No one can, you know? I might read long. That makes sense. I might yeah, read long. Yeah, because I've always... Long. You know, I guess I've always tried to predict. Oh well, once you get to a liquidity point, if it's going to keep going in reverse. But I, I guess mean, look at I mean, look at this right here. We can kind of see this live. We sell extremely aggressive into this low just to possibly buy it up. You know, we make a nice FBG right here, right up in here. It gets filled up, and now we're pushing up higher. So we could we could trap everyone that's going short. Things about to fall off a cliff. So I'm actually really long in this right now. So. Eee! Oh wait. Oh my god, we got stopped out instantly. That's funny. Ah, all right. But if it doesn't work out, that's fine. I just wanted to do it. Because that's usually what I do. I just impulse buy, in all honesty. So it was very, very odd to me. Because it's a very rare feeling that I have that I don't, that I just didn't want to trade. Or I was too afraid to trade, I should say. Because usually that's what I do is I just impulse buy and say, fuck it. But this morning, I legitimately couldn't enter it. I was so far away from this high that I wasn't thinking about Okay, if I'm targeting this, it doesn't matter if it stops up here because I'm it's the stop's not gonna get hit. You know? So yeah. 
and it was and it was the same kind of thing where oh gosh I need to find last week because last week was last week was the whole reason I wanted to even start talking about this but it happened again today and that's when I ex that's why I was so upset I was like I need to talk about this because what I was looking for not what I was looking for but what I saw was the same thing I was seeing on Wednesday yeah okay so Wednesday last week we did this whole dump overnight just fucking shit in the bed whatever so I was I was actually I actually went short on Wednesday you know and I just got tra I just got trapped short which is fine but going back into it I realized like how not necessarily how effective the YOLO kind of stop is but when you see something like this, and again, this is 15. This is a 15. Wait, is that 930? I need to smell that. Fuck, bro, what day is this? I have no idea what day this is now. Oh my god. I am so lost. It was a Wednesday. It's like last week. Wednesday. Yeah, here we go. Okay. So going into like this, right? So it's already, it's like nine. Yeah, okay, so you see something like this, right? And you see something like this. By the time you get to here, it's obvious that the short wasn't working. So it was the same kind of thing where I was essentially, ex Hang on, I'm trying to think how to explain it. So obviously I was trying to go short Wednesday. That didn't work, okay? But by the time I realized that we were printing this, it was so obvious to me that we were going to gun for this high that this is a time where you, this is a time where since you, not say you yellow stop it, but yeah, you would have yellow, you would have, could have, you know, yellow stopped it. Where you realize that the draw is, so, the draw liquidity is so obvious that you're gunning for this high. It doesn't matter where you enter because if you're going for this target, you're going to hit this target first before any stop loss gets hit. And it's just going to melt its way up towards it. And that's kind of what it did. Right? It just fucking, it just blew it out of the water later. Now, is it late to the party? Sure. But it's still a green directional trade in that sense. Because that's what the new draw was, right? I was targeting going lower, whatever, which was stupid, admittedly. Looking at it back, but by the time I realized I was wrong and we were getting a print like this at 950, so this is 20 minutes into open. So this isn't this isn't like, you know, jumping the gun two minutes into open. This is 20 minutes in. You get something like this. It's so obvious that you're targeting this high that you just take the trade in that direction. And you just assume it's going to get hit before your stop loss does. And that's how you can tell if you're following the trend. Or not say following the trend, but if you're either chasing or if... um. I guess, yeah, if you're chasing or not, because when you're looking at this, if my target is here, I'm not chasing it because the target hasn't been hit yet. Now we go to Monday. What did I... Oh, what was I go to this one. You know, go back to Monday. What was I doing? The target was hit, and then I'm selling into it. That's chasing because the target the target was hit. In this instance, target wasn't hit. Target was up here at 30, 38, whatever. Mm -hmm. So... That's really like the big thing you have to look at is has that target been hit yet? Because if it hasn't, then you know that's still probably going to gravitate towards and the stop loss. Not to say it's not, not that's not going to matter, but the likelihood of it getting hit is so low that you can risk that you can have a high stop loss hit or like limit essentially because the chances that it gets hit are so low. Are you following me? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Those YOLO stops, though, I guess you gotta... Well, even if you do have a wide stop, you just gotta mentally prepare yourself for a pretty red number if it pulls back a good chunk. If it doesn't work, yes. So the way you get past this is you need to have confidence in that this is your new... It needs to be so fucking obvious that you're going the other direction or going for some high or some low that you know that you're gonna draw to that first before you do anything else. Okay, so like... uh. Like in this one. The hell is this? Is this Wednesday? No. Dude, why does it do this? Yeah, I don't know why I did that. 
Anyway, so like in this, is it obvious that we're going for 37 or for 38? No, not really, right? We got this. You could very easily, we don't know, right? We could have easily just fucking sold into this. This is what I kind of expect. I was expecting it to just build, like trade up, maybe take this or something like this and then slam it down, right? That's what I was expecting to do. But by the time I got to here, it was so obvious that the short's not going to work and you're gunning for this high. It's like, well, why are you doing any, you know, why even, I guess that it's, the 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 answer of where we were going was so obvious that you're probably just going to end up going in that direction. That you just fucking YOLO it and, you know, and now if you want to actually look at this markup, yeah, you know, you got the stop out here, you have a kind of stop here at 905, like it's very obvious that you're taking out early long. So if you're taking out early longs, you're doing it to go long. Because again, now your new target is here because it's it's so obvious now at this point, it's like where else, what else are you going for? It's not, it, you see this kind, you see this type of candle print and clearly we failed to go lower. If we're not going lower, we're going higher, right? So. Yep. That's like a super, you know, kind of important thing to look at is, has that target been hit yet? Because if it hasn't, you're probably going to draw to that first and the stop loss. And even if you put it, even if it is down here, it doesn't matter because it doesn't get hit. That's why if you ever heard like Vixen say, if you ask her, she will literally tell you like direction over stop loss. Because it's true. Because if your direction is right, the stop loss doesn't get hit. So it doesn't matter. Yep. I got it. Eat my kale salad. Oh. But this is kind of what got me in that mood or like that idea from like, this was last week, Wednesday. I didn't talk about it that much, but I just said like, I got trapped short, but it did it today because the draw on liquidity was so obvious that we were going to trade lower that even though my stop would have been up here, it wouldn't have mattered because the stop never, the stop would never got fucking hit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's the real like big thing to be looking at is knowing where your draw and liquidity is and hasn't been met yet. Because if it hasn't, you're probably going to keep moving towards it if you're correct on the analysis. It's like, and even on... Even at 9.30, I mean, it just makes a whole fucking Judas swing. Just a, just a rip at 9.30. Just burning out everybody. Which also yeah. helps... Which also helps the buy side flood into the market because people are getting stopped out and you have people FOMO buying this. So you have two kind of... um. You essentially have two style of orders funneling. You have like voluntary orders of FOMO and you have forced by market orders that are buy stops. So that's a lot of buy orders coming into the market, right? And buy orders are going to pair what? They're going to pair sell, they're going to pair open shorts. Sellers. Yeah, I was actually, if I, uh, while well, I was in a meeting this morning, I probably would have paper handed my uh, KQQ puts yeah. on open if I saw that. So quick thing, I know all this works on equities too. So if you pull up BA real quick. The BA? Yeah. Boeing. I think I've extended on it. Uh, I don't think extended matters. If you just pull up the daily. Oh, well, daily. <laughs> I forgot about all the old shit, bro. I look at yeah. old stocks and I just have random shit on it. It's so funny. So I guess today was, I mean, it, it followed, I mean, just today by itself, if you zoom in, I guess it all follows the drawn liquidity because you have that old high there. This one? I mean, it followed the market too, I guess, because that mm -hmm. basically fit in the market, but uh, right. I guess it went up there. I shorted at the top, praying that it would drop down. I guess it did, but it... On Boeing? Sense. Yeah. Yeah. And even you can kind of see on this, it takes... it. You have the buy side, whatever. Buy side's kind of resting here. Mm -hmm. It runs for sell side first. These equal lows right here. Yep. Trades it out. So if you take sell side, what's left? Buy side. So mm -hmm. that's what it kind of moves towards afterwards. That's still fine. I just have random. I, I just have random shit sometimes. Great. I gotta clear that out. Like old ass stocks that I use because I haven't been trading stocks in fucking months. But just random shit like that. Let's have stuff drawn. But you can even kind of see how it's the same. It's the same shit as you know futures. You got like triple fucking lows here. You run this high. Fill this gap. Shit on it. Like it sounds familiar, and it, it should, because it is. You know? It's the same kind of movement in anything, right? Just kind of what you're talking in the very, very beginning, how you're going to stop people out before going short. 
I mean, hopefully, you know, we're kind of seeing it now. We're going to stop these people out that are kind of right up here. Because you can see it takes it out by the pivot. Kind of just marking it out for the sake of eye's sake. It just, it takes those early people out and then goes later, goes lower. And it fills a gap too. So you're, again, that kind of goes into the whole confluence thing is you're always looking at multiple things. You're not looking at, oh, it's just buy side getting taken. It's, you know, it's buy side into a gap into, you know, a bunch of things. And you're piecing everything together so you can take it in a certain direction. I got it. Thanks. Uh, I know there's other people probably with in, uh, questions too. So I. I think only Happy X asked the question. Oh. Oh. So. Got it. And his main thing was kind of imbalances, which I guess a gap, a gap in a mark, and a gap in a stock is an imbalance by definition. You know? Yeah. So but yeah, it's the it's the same it's the same shit, dude. The fact that fucking Boeing does it is the same reason that the S and P five hundred does it, bro. Same reason Nasdaq does it. They all do it. They all do the exact same shit on purpose. Because it's all controlled. It's kind of risk that, but yeah. I mean, very easily. Not saying we should, but you know, you have a gap here in Boeing. Got an imbalance also. You kind of ran by side. I don't know what the fuck this is. Oh my god, did it fill this? Oops. I forgot this is a daily. <laughs> There you go. So it did it just to fill a gap. Oh my god, it ripped along. That long is fucking disgusting. Smoke. I gotta check the dollar first. Your dollar's so bullish. Ooh, that's a bullish dollar. Ooh. Okay. Alright, well. Ripped along. It had to it had to fail at some point. Just seven o'clock inverse at eight. I mean, to be fair, it did work. I just didn't cut it because the app it was my own fault. Bad trade man. What? That was the whole reason I wanted to do, um talk about today is because I literally saw the same shit happen and I was like, oh nah, oh nah. I mean, you kind of even see it here, buy side, buy side, runs this up. And again, I want you to, um, I was also kind of applying some logic of, if you remember me talking about, um, if something's supposed to happen, it should. And if it's not, then it's probably going to do something else. Right? So as I was watching the market today, I was kind of telling myself, I, I mean, I even mentioned the very beginning. If we're going to be, like, because obviously 9.30 print and close like that. So I'm like, if we're going to be bullish, we should be trading above this. Like, some, it doesn't have to be this candle. It can be the next one, two candles from now. But some candle at some point should close above this high and stay above it. And it never fucking happened. So if it never fucking happened, it's probably going to do what? Go, do, go the other direction and do the other thing. Like, if it's supposed to be trading higher and trading above this, like, if this is supposed to be a markup, it will go up. And if it's failing to do what it's supposed to do, then it's probably going to go do the opposite. And that's what I'm happy. It just goes 3 one, 2 and just fucking dumps it. My God, the dollar. Look at that thing go, dude. definitely right, what's up oh i said thanks uh chilby actually shot you a question i think you answered most of my concerns questions yeah no fear. Whoa. i'm bad Um, so where did you ask me a question? Oh, sure. I don't see anything right now. That's okay. There's times where you just want to avoid the market. I mean, I want to avoid it right now. I'm livid at what fucking happened to me because I didn't participate. But 
no matter what the move the move up never made sense for sure because we had the old gap and cold Yes, coming up. Okay. Ish. Oh crap. Oh, uh, it's in your market chatter in your. Yeah, board. I see it now. Oh, okay. I mean, I. I mean, the thing with ES today, especially, was overnight. It fucking sniped high. It sniped the old high a day. It sniped yesterday's high a day, like in the middle. Yeah, like right at nine thirty. It didn't do it. I don't know if it did. I don't think it did. Yeah, so it didn't even come close on Nasdaq. It took out whatever this fucking high was at three o'clock, which is good that we were looking at on the you know that we were looking on the fifteen. But yeah, ES literally took out high a day at nine o'clock. So if you take out high a day, same thing. If you if you take buy side, all that's left is sell side. So it kind of just does whatever. And you can even see I even marked out midnight opening for the week. So like Monday midnight is also your weekly open. You can kind of see how it's the same thing, same power of three that we're familiar with. Because I was looking at net. The problem was I was looking at Nasdaq and I was like, if if we're gonna go bearish power of three, what should we do? Hopefully come back into some kind of above midnight open and then we can distribute lower later in the week, which is what ES did, but not Nasdaq. So it kind of did it, but it didn't. You know, if what if one indice does it, that's good enough. In all honesty, and also it's Nasdaq, and Nasdaq is stupid, and we'll do extra shit just to be extra. So when um yeah, so the fact that we took a high a day as well in ES in morning, the only thing that was like, and we took out we actually we took out low a day first, and then it went long, and then we went to high a day, so we went sell side to buy side. What's Next is sell side, you know. But again, you can even kind of see how on the on a sort of a weekly profile, and how you can get like sort of really nice swings also for the week, is having that kind of like even like an hourly or something. Just mark out midnight for like four days, and see how it trades through it. You can even kind of see here if we think of power of three and what it does. We're accumulating shorts up here because you can see how we trade up above it throw it down. We do it again on Tuesday, throw it down. So we should be looking for ideally either expansion lower or up into this and do whatever, but more than likely you go more than likely you go lower. Because you have a lot of daily lows. You have one, two, three, four, five. And I'm not saying pivot machine guns exist, but I definitely didn't make them up. And these are all just daily levels, by the way. Yeah, like one, two, literally five daily lows we could shit on. Like, soon. Not this week, but, like, eventually. You know? And again, we're just wicking up over a daily high just to collect anyone that's trying to go short off this. Take them out first. Which, again, in our picture, if we're taking people out early, it's to do what? So we can continue in that intended direction. So the, that's why you always get correct in the direction, but then you get stopped out and it goes. It's because you're on the you're on the right side of the market, but they just don't want you to participate. You know. So I mean, the next the next day the next target you know on the oh, but next kind of target on a daily is this daily low, and maybe this. Now what'll probably happen is we're going to get some kind of reaction off this first. Because again, we remember we need to take out every single order that exists before we can continue. So you ideally, you react off this, do whatever, and then, you know, fade it lower. Because there's definitely unfilled orders here. Kind of just how um I didn't want to long up here anyways, because it's like, if you have this kind of fair value gap down here, why would you be trying to long this when you know you have shit that you essentially need to fix? Or you keep going up higher, and notice how we barely go higher. We just kind of eat, and then go lower. Kind of very similar to uh, last week. If you remember, um, chill. When did we trade? We traded thir was it Thursday. What was a Nasdaq trade we did on Thursday. Was it? Dude, was it Thursday? I don't even know. Oh yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. When Powell was talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because remember on a, on that Thursday, it was the same kind of thing where. It didn't make sense to long, like we longed, and sure, we you know we made a profit because you hit the target, but.
but like there it wasn't a true expansion higher at all not even a little bit it came lower and then expanded so it could be the same kind of thing where it's tap it and then try to expand and you can definitely notice the um like if you draw an hourly chart out or if you go on like an hourly and draw kind of a weekly profile you can see how well things trade and react to it so I would admit ES on this weekly open looks like crap because it never, it barely doesn't even reach, it doesn't even reach midnight open. But on NASDAQ it does. And it uses FOMC to do it. So think about the power of three that we're always talking about. Now think about it now through five days of data and not just one. And that's when you start to really dial in like the practicality of the market, how fucking insane this shit is. Right? You can see we open here. Think about this on, let me get a, Think about this, how this is going to look on a candle, right? We open here. We go lower. We manipulate it higher. And then distribute it lower later in the week. And then it did, yeah, it went lower Friday, barely. But you can kind of see what I'm saying. I don't know, it did that Friday. But you can see what I'm saying. But now it's doing this on a weekly time frame. But it's also doing this every single day at minute. You can kind of see how minute opens like here. Yeah, let me draw like some shit. Same kind of thing. Manipulates higher, distributes it lower. Wednesday in here, manipulate it lower, and then distributes higher. Now, granted, we had FOMC th that day, so it's not, you know, the real move is going to be happening at 2 o'clock. But same exact thing. Manipulate it lower underneath midnight open up in here. You can see how it fucking trades right underneath it and then goes higher. All while doing it just to catch the weekly open, so it can do the exact same thing. And that's how you get really, really good day trades. Is understanding where you're at in the week compared to the open, and then also the daily open. Because you're going to realize it does this shit all the fucking time. It's very, very, it's not odd, it's cool. Because, check this shit out. Guess what we did last week on NASDAQ? Look at this. Open up, midnight, bam, what do we do? We open up. Alright, so we open up. You can kind of see the line here, right? We open up here. We manipulate it higher. Get people going this well. We, we're accumulating longs first is what we're actually doing. We're accumulating longs. We manipulate it lower. Un, notice how we're underneath. Now midnight open. Now granted, this is like, like 5 in the morning. So you couldn't have caught this. But understanding where you're at in a weekly profile, you want to be a buyer underneath midnight open. And you're close to it, right? These are kind of, you can see the big volume. This is where market opens. So at the very least, you're able to recognize that, okay, I'm by the weekly open, and anytime we go underneath, that, like, that's kind of our manipulation phase, is just going out and then squeezing that higher. So if we're doing that, what comes after the manipulation? The distribution. So if we're manipulating lower, we should be distributing higher, and that's what we did Thursday, Friday. And again, we did this on a weekly profile. But we're also doing it every single day as well within that at the same time. And that's what's so fucking crazy. That's why if you ever heard me say like in my accord, I'll say like high of the week is usually set on Wednesday or Tuesday. Or like high or low of the week is set on And it is on this case. Like low of the week basically gets put in on Wednesday. Middle of the day. Or middle, like early in the morning, whatever. You can even see kind of the large volume coming in. That's just for someone to catch all the buys here to absorb it. If, that's, if your manipulation is lower, you're going to distribute it higher. So now we're going to look at it this week, and we can't fake this week. Same kind of thing, manipulate it higher. If we're manipulating it higher, what should we be doing then? We should be distributing lower. And again, it looks way cleaner on ES. It looks, even, it looks way cleaner on ES this week. NASDAQ, two weeks before, was clean. Now it's ES's turn to look fucking fire. And it's looking, you know what I'm saying? And again, you can even kind of see it. It looks... I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, yeah, see, it doesn't even... Yeah, it doesn't even touch Midnight Open on ES, like, last two weeks. It just barely hits it, and then just goes. But NASDAQ, you saw it cross over twice. But now it's ES's turn to cross it, I guess. I don't know. Obviously, we know that all the indices do the same thing, but this is how you get, like, how ICT will say, like, excellence in short-term trading is because you're recognizing what you're doing on the day and most likely the direction on the week because it's the draw that you're looking for. So 
if we're looking for higher prices after you know our manipulation our manipulation higher if we're going to be looking for lower prices we should be ideally taking shorts because that's what the expansion that we should be looking for Eat my fucking salad. Hmm. So chill. Back to ES. If we look at what we have here. If Hive of the Week is usually set on Tuesday or Wednesday. I think ICT says like 70% of the time. It's set on Tuesday or Wednesday, high or low of the week. What should we really be expecting based off the information we have of two out of the five days of the week? If we can clearly see the manipulation higher, we take a high a day, and we do a ju we did a Judas swing at 9.30, and we're just swinging above midnight open, just to do what? The complete opposite. That's where we should, if we're going to be distributing lower, we should, you know, if we're manipulating higher, we should be distributing lower. I know it sounds confusing because I realize fucking Wyckoff uses like accumulation as bullish, distribution as lower, as bearish, but yeah. It's so crazy once you mark up midnight opens because you see the same shit. It does the same shit on the week. Deja, because I know if you remember um, this kind of this week or like last week how we were talking about this up in here. How we were like way up here. If you remember it all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Check this shit out. Uh, oh, fuck, where's Monday? Where's Monday? There you go. Look at this. Monday, right here. Open. Boom. Distribute it. What do we do? Middle of the week. Thursday. Come back up. And do, well. Yeah. In this case, we kind of just return to the open, in all honesty. But, again, you can see how much, how many people we tried to take up before we actually did it. You know? Yeah. Take out Tuesday's low, Wednesday's low. Thursday's low, and then just so you're just manipulating lower to do what? Distribute it higher. And again, low of the week is set on Wednesday. Right? So, very, very cool shit. Admittedly, this week was admittedly that midnight open was kind of shit. But, wait till you see this week. I right, know this was June. It's, it's the same shit, but it's so cool once you start seeing it. Open. Manipulate higher, distribute it lower. Manipulate it higher again. You can see midnight open again, distribute it lower. And this is on like this is how you get. This is what how you, again get to like that short term trading like ideal direction and shit is because you're recognizing where you're at in the week. Are you you know above below midnight open? Where are you most likely to expand? You know if we're ripping up higher, because again think about back into a, where I was talking about is something supposed to happen but isn't. If we're getting candles printed like this, and you know we're getting this trade lower, well, actually it didn't take these out, so rest in peace that. But if you get a push up, you can even see, you know, it stops these people out, and then. Tr oh. oh, never mind. Yeah, I don't want to go. Anyways. Mm. If we're supposed to trade higher after a kind of print like this, like you're taking out all this sell side that's kind of up in here, and you're expecting to push higher, and it's not doing what it's supposed to do, it's probably going to do the opposite. And that's exactly what happened. So definitely keep that in mind of, if I'm seeing certain things print, this is what it's supposed to be doing. When it's not, it's probably going to go, you know, do the opposite of what it's supposed to do. Yeah. And to be fair, it also uh, set up triple lows, which is kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, your script, or your uh, pivot point script? Yeah. It's very useful. I, I It's not a built-in, right? It's a custom one? Yeah. I only use it because my eyes are dog shit. <laughs> like, so like, I'm looking at, like, like, today, right? I can tell it took out this high. It's very easy. I can't, I can barely tell it took out this high. Right? Mm -hmm. I have, like, a, let me just remove this. You can barely, like, I can do, you can barely tell by eyes if it took it out. That's my whole thing. That's really the only reason I have it on. There's no, like, 
It's not some fucking sauce or some dumb shit. It's literally because my eyes are bad. Is literally no, it's is not, why I have it, it on. It helps you see stuff that. Yeah, uh, it's just drawing. It really is just drawing, drawing buy side and sell side for me. That's all it's doing. It's not telling me go short, go long. It's literally oh, no, just no, marking no. shit out. It's just basically telling you, hey, there's a, a low here or you know something here. Don't ignore it. Yeah, for the most part. And I need to add it back. I need to reload this. So. Oh, when you say it's a uh, prop time, what are you talking about? Prop time or prop open or something? Oh, prop firm. You work at a prop? No. Try to oh. pass like one of them online tests for work. God. If I worked at a prop firm, I wouldn't be fucking. I wouldn't be having an actual job. But yeah. I've been trying to do that instead of um regular trading just for the sake of money. It's a little bit cheaper in all honesty. And also with my trading style it's actually pretty bad. I really I honestly go max risk, fuck it. I, if the direction is right, the stop loss doesn't get hit. It's a very, very bad habit that I have. But I definitely apply that logic when I trade. So like I'll max risk my account. Let the contracts die just to be right. Because my thought process is, if I'm right, the stop loss will never get hit, so I won't lose the money. Which, please don't ever do. That is the worst financial advice I could ever give somebody. It's just how I am. <laughs> but that's the same kind of logic with, like, um, you know, today, or like I was talking about with you earlier. If that draw hasn't been hit yet, the stop loss doesn't matter, because the likelihood of the stop loss getting hit is so much lower that you probably are okay. And I apply the same shit when I trade them. That's why I always say, like, let the contracts die. But I also say that in part because people put way too much emphasis, I feel, on percentage losses of a contract and not the actual contract itself. Because, you know, options are just derivatives of the chart. So your stop loss is going to be based on the chart and not what the, um, what the contract is, right? The, 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 Option contract is based off of the chart, so your stop loss should be on the chart, not the contract. Yes. That's my thing. So you can set it at the underlying cost, not the actual. Op well, yeah. Because with contracts, is, yes. I notice that you know, oh yeah, well, this is how much I want to set it at. But any hard swing, you know, SPX excluded, it'll knock your stop so easily. Yeah, that's no. I only go by underlying because that's what that's what the chart is, or that's what the contract is. It's the underlying chart. It's not the contract. Contract has nothing to do with the chart. That's just the medium that you're trading it in. You know? So, that's why I also say let them die. Or, if you can't do that, you get a contract that's so cheap that you can let it die. And then, again, you let your stop loss get hit based on the underlying in the chart slash equity. Not because, oh, my contract went minus 20%. That's fucking stupid. Because you even said it yourself, one violent swing will drastically change your percentage gains immediately. And take you out of it for no reason. Just because the bid and ask on the contract gets skewed for a little bit. Even though the actual underlying in the chart is fine. Yep. So that's why I never trade it. And that's why I treat the contracts as literally what they are. They're leveraged shares. And they're nothing more than that. So. <laughs> yeah. If any, yeah. If you're trading like based off percentage of the contract. Just stop doing that. Because you're probably getting stopped out more times than you need to. When you're correct. If anything, like there's there's no reason to have that because that's part of the problem is you're trying to tr what you're trying to do at that point is you're trying to trade leverage. I was gonna talk to Mango about this. You're basically trying to trade leverage on a cash account when you don't actually have leverage at all. You need to trade it. You need to treat it as what it is, which is cash. So. You know, let your contract die, have your stop in the underlying, because that's what your account is. You're not trading a mar you're, you're trying to trade a margin account with a not actual margin. Margin in this sense being the contract, because, you know, you get more shares per price instead of buying actual shares, you know. So. I'd average out on this, okay. I'm going to go one, though. I'm going to go one lot. One line of actual cut it, because I've been... I'm very stubborn. I'm very, very bad about being wrong. I'm horrible at that. Trade minis? No. I'm poor for I've minis. Been trading, I've been trading minis for a few months. I do okay until I 
get cocky and then I take losses. Mango, are you uh yeah. too poor? Mango? I usually trade um I usually trade Na trade Nasdaq or spy. I mean I am trading the prop firm I'm trading the future contracts. So I guess technically yes. I'm just not trading minis with my own money. But this is all I trade is the indices. And if anything I'm buying I'm trading Nasdaq itself. I'm still looking at all the indices like that. But uh, the one that I'm typically buying or selling is the NASDAQ itself. And that's just because of how Forex works. Because it's really, it's not, it's really stupid, if anything. Like, so XP, it's so like NASDAQ right now. Again, it's fake money. Holy shit, I know what's going on YouTube, but fake money. So, like, this, every point in NASDAQ, so like, fuck, where's the price? Yeah, so like 34 to 35 is 10 bucks on NASDAQ. On XPX, so like the on SPY, the the CFD for it, one point is one dollar. So if I want to get the same amount of exposure as a future contract, I would have to do like fifty lots, which is unfathomable and not realistic. So I literally just trade the Nasdaq in order to um in order to get leverage similar to I'm basically trading a future contract, same amount of leverage of like one point is twenty bucks. Is what I'm doing right now. So it's the exact same. Also, prime example, if this trades higher, this is gonna be a fucking order block forming. Because if this is coming down like this, it should trade lower. If it's not, it's probably gonna do what? Trade higher. Our XX I have no idea what that is. No clue what that is. I barely know what an SPX contract is. Like I know what they are, I just don't know how they work and how are they different. Mini SPX is there a point in buying those? Like, what's the point in buying that over just the normal fucking contract? These holes are the same price. Cheaper. Is that XP? Really? These are like 200 bucks. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, tenth of the size, so yeah, definitely cheaper. That's funny. But that also must be why those they go so insane, is they'll go from, like, one to fucking at the money's worth, like, 2,000. <laughs> That's awesome. But, yeah, I mean, I just trade the spy. I, I know there's, like, a tax difference or some shit like that, I think. Or... If you get direction, yeah, point one to one, honestly. That's literally what it does, for sure. But yeah. I don't know. I, just, I have no problem with spy contracts right now. Like, like I said, the contracts aren't the reason I win or lose. It never will be. It doesn't matter, like, which contract you trade. It's going to be It's the same either way, you know. Because, again, all those contracts, they're... Exactly what they are. They're just derivatives of the chart. Chart's gonna chart. Chart is what matters, not the contract. You know. I gotta eat more food. So, so we got more questions. Otherwise, I'm gonna, just gonna try to navigate towards happy feet. You know, about imbalances, which is everyone should be familiar with. But do you want to get that in? Uh, Chilby asked you how to trade with, uh, Osea. I don't even fucking know. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Let's find out together. Let's find out together, dude. I have no fucking idea. Alright, wait, are we talking about... I don't know, okay. I don't know if you can OCO a contract based on underline. I know you can exit based on underline. I don't know... Yeah, I mean, if you could take a stop loss on underlying, I would assume you could do an exit, like a take profit on it as well. I would assume. I have yes, no idea. I've done it on TOS Mobile. I know you could do it on the desktop, but I really... But can you... Okay, what I'm trying to figure out is, can you do an OCO of a contract with the underlying price and not the actual contract? Yes. Okay. But well, when I, don't I know do how to... it, I have, I have to do it on a market order. Instead yeah, yeah. Of Oh yeah, yeah. You have to market order the contract to get in. But I'm saying you set the you set the bracket afterwards. You set the stop loss. Set the 
take profit on the underline and go from there, I would assume. Yes. Yeah, I literally have zero fucking clue, so that might be a Deja question, dude. No clue at all. Never done it. I know they work. I should do them. Just don't. I know it's not the answer you want to hear, but yeah. Zero fucking clue how to do it. So. I want to say Chill does use TOS. Um. Alright, I'm going to talk about, uh, imbalances right quick for my boy. Alright. So we can kind of see him here, you know, very, very easy to spot in this sense. So imbalance, happy feet, is going to be, you know, the um, the space between three candles. So for example, this high to this low, the space in between here, that's a gap, that's an imbalance. One here to here, imbalance. Uh, this is technically an imbalance because it's a gap down. In a market, which is also an imbalance. Uh, imbalance here, imbalance here. Technically, another one here. Like so, these things are they're definitely everywhere. And but it's you know super important you know, imbalance here by definition. Definition space between three candles imbalance. You know, there's imbalance here. Oh, imbalance here. Another one here. So one here so, again space between three candles. There's one technically here. I'm not going to go into that, but here, one here. Oops, oops, holy shit! Right there, got one right here. A little do, little doozer right here. Got another one right here. So you can see that you'll see the event every time frame, everywhere, all the time, forever. They're always going to be there. Now, if we're going to go on how to use them, that's where she gets spicy. But that is like by definition, when it imbalances the space between any three candles, between the high and the low. What they do is essentially a few main points that they do. One of them is it can be used to signify order blocks, so kind of to essentially validate them and tell you if they're, you know, essentially worth looking at or not. So, like for example, this one right here, the buy up to sell lower, it left an imbalance behind afterwards. That makes it, you know, a lot more valid than something like. I gotta find one. <laughs> Something like this, where yes, this is technically an order block with a buy to sell, but you can see there wasn't any large displacement. There wasn't any, there wasn't any imbalances left behind afterwards. Like even on this one, there's this this very very small imbalance. It gets filled relatively quickly. Right, this is at 4:30. It's the worst time to trade ever, but same kind of thing. So what you're really going to be using imbalances for is to see if price can return to it and then possibly move away from it after. So, for example, like in this, we got the order block coming here with these consecutive down close candles. It pushes up higher. Now, we don't know if that's, you know, order block we're taking until it leaves kind of an imbalance or a fair value gap, as ICT will call it. It's the same term. Same thing. I think this YouTube smart money calls it imbalances. And he just coined it as the FBG. So, I eat my salad, hang on. Oh, shit. All right. So what you're looking for, and kind of what ICT's whole 22 mentorship model is right now, is all based on the fair value gap, like FEG slash imbalance, is you're looking for price to trade back into it, and then can continue higher. So same kind of thing here. We see a nice placement. The imbalance left behind after the order block formula with these consecutive down close boys. Market trades back up into it, and then continues. And that's what you're looking for when you're trying to trade these or execute on them. Now, a lot of times they don't get hit. Like this one, the one that's left here, it never gets fucking touched. It just, it's like, I gotta go. But you can see this one right here. This one trades back into it for the most part and then continues. Now, one thing to definitely keep in mind is once the, once even a small portion of it is filled, forget about it. It's done. It, the move is going to be made, right? So, for example, you could theoretically argue that the imbalance that still remains that is unfilled is in here, right? Because the entire imbalance used to be, so the entire imbalance used to be this blue, I'm going to make a fucking move, this blue box right here. It used to be this tall. 
it trades into it it still leaves this kind of space but then continues higher so once that happens forget about this it's not going back for it there's if it does that's fine sweet nanny but the likelihood of it is and you looking for a trade like that you will probably throw a limit order that will never get filled trading like that because again you can see it just pushes up higher leaves this it does come back to rebalance it pushes up higher this imbalance notice how it barely comes in for it one left left in here this candle slams down into it trades like fucking five percent of this imbalance if that and then pushes up higher so the fact that this is still left forget about it you shouldn't be looking for any execution after the gap has been any attempt has been made to reach and rebalance into it however deep it trades into is fine but whatever is left behind don't worry about it because there's, there's no point going back for it because again you ain't never catching this long trying to get in here it just fucking climbed it, it was gone without you right so that's the big thing that you're looking for when you're trying to trade these is can you see price return back into it to rebalance and then continue higher and this is everywhere i'm gonna say that right now and again you can also use imbalances to again showcase whether orders are here in the market or not so you can even kind of see in here the imbalance that's left behind here because again the space between these three candles oh i need to sneeze no, i don't okay the imbalance that's left here gets repriced a little bit by these couple candles at whatever time this was and then trades lower and leaves another fatty one what does the market do it leaves one here trades down into it and then continues up leaves this amount rebalances it you know it sells hard into this this will buy it up later that is a super important thing you want to be looking for if you're seeing aggressive moves into an imbalance of the opposite direction more than likely they're doing it to get to fill the orders that were there by retail and dinguses because what imbalances also show is that there are leftover orders in the market still residing there because the only way that an imbalance can be created is if price moves too far in one direction too fast that's how they're made so you know that once those are made their or orders still have to be resting there if it's unfilled now that doesn't mean you should trade off it because again could you of in this sense because you know that old orders are sitting here yes sure is a it's really it's i'm not gonna lie, it's really risky you got to know what you're doing but for the time being you want to be looking for imbalances just to have price rebalance up into it like this and then continue that's all you need to be looking for for the very basic that's what ict preaches for his 2022 mentorship that's the whole bread and butter is you've seen it trade back up to it doesn't have to come back up all the way into it because again notice how it barely comes up it trades like 20 percent of this imbalance and then just continues does it come back for it later yeah but again it has to close out the orders here before it can continue and that's just kind of a an auction theory style thing of like you have to take out every order that exists before a new price point can be made because you have to keep moving higher so could you have done if you're an advanced kind of trader you could have traded this just trade the reaction off this sure but like i said you have to know what you're doing and you don't want to be doing that initially you want to be looking for something like this where you leave an imbalance you slam into it in the opposite direction you're looking to get in on that selling off it's i'll admit it's one of the hardest things you can do as a trader is buying this when it's when a candle is printing this red to be a buyer it is hard it is extremely hard to do but it is one of the best things you can do for yourself but it is a very very hard thing to do if you're watching that if you're watching that candle print bright red and you're doing the complete opposite of what it's doing now that's what smart money is doing and that's how you can get much better fills and things like that and it's what you should be doing but i'm not gonna lie to you and say that's easy it is extremely difficult especially like for me as someone that's swayed by current candles printing so for example if i see a green candle i just buy it if i see a red candle i just sell it so doing the complete opposite of that is was extremely hard for me it still is it's very very hard to do because you think this thing's about to fall off a cliff when it's really not it's just coming in to fill this imbalance that was left here just so it can do what buy and reprice higher and fill it up higher and 
And again, you can kind of see how it digs deeper into this imbalance right here with this candle, and then does this lower on this candle, and then proceeds to continue. Same kind of reaction style that you were seeing off of this, where you know that there's leftover shorts here. So that you know that, um, so you know it needs to be taken care of, and again, they need to be closed before you can continue. So it closes these, so that way it can what proceed higher because if there's sell orders sitting there, you can't price higher because there's still sell orders there. So, same kind of thing here, you know that there's buy orders here because there's an imbalance, you're selling into it to, to get them filled, so that way you can again continue to reprice higher. But the whole Imbalance reaction style trading is a much more advanced thing. And for right now, all you want to be doing is looking for, again, even something like this. You see an imbalance that's left in here. Price digs into it. Notice how it fills this damn near perfectly. Fills the imbalance like kind of like this. Whoa. Barely just sells right into it hard. That's where you want to be a buyer. This is where you want to be a buyer is when it's bright red in a green imbalance. And again, it is one of the hardest things you can do as a trader. Starting off, if you've done retail and things like that for a lot, a time, or if you have bad FOMO like I do, it is extremely hard to do. But that's basically what you're looking for in the beginning, is imbalances to get filled like this and then proceed in the continued direction of the original balance. And that's what ICT's whole mentorship and model is based off of right now. Like one of, one of his models. He has multiple, but that's one of them. And like the one he's teaching everyone right now it's a very very simple model but it's it can be very very hard to do if you're an emotional person looking at candles because all of a sudden your direction is going to get swayed looking at one thing print lower when in reality you don't want to be selling this you want to be buying this it's very very hard to do i promise you and again same kind of thing here well on this one in small imbalance here reprices into it trades higher reprices it one more time trades up higher and that's what this, that's the model that you're looking for this reaction stuff is advanced and difficult, so I would not recommend it at all. Don't start with it. Start with just repricing into it and then continuing in that direction. Same kind of thing here. Imbalance left up here. Trades up down to it barely. You know, you draw this imbalance out, you're talking, what, 20%, 25% at most of this candle getting filled, of this imbalance getting filled. And then price is higher. Right? And that's what you're looking for. That under that taking of like sell side, for example, which even more so. So this candle eventually, you know, it closed like this, but it was bright red at one point, right? So this was a bright red candle underneath sell side in a green imbalance, or like buy imbalance. That's where you're looking along. You take a position and to reprice it higher. And you would have been rewarded in this case. Now again, could you have done the whole reaction thing? Yeah. Kind of more of a level 2 advanced imbalance style of trading. But for right now, you just want to be looking at the imbalances being made, repricing into it, and then continuing. You don't want to be just looking for YOLO reactions and wondering why price is bouncing at random stuff. It will get you very, very lost in the sauce, I promise you. Stick with the basics for right now, for sure. Same thing kind of in here. Imbalance left. Trades into it hard, slams down into it, reprices it higher. So, what else? And this is on Dixie, so this is the US dollar. Right? And this is and this is on like a three minute time frame. This stuff is happening everywhere all the time. Even, so even how we had that old one that I was just talking about, you can even kind of see it here. The order block that's made here with the imbalance left it trades back down into it, and then reprices it all higher. That's what you're looking for. Those are the type of trades you're looking for, like trading imbalances as a beginner. Those are exact kind of trades. Imbalance right here, well, more of a reaction one, so maybe not, but. These types of imbalances, again, they show everywhere. You can see this one here on the hourly. You can see one, well, this one actually got repriced already, but there's one here in the hourly, and one here, like there are every time frame everywhere. The whole market exists fractally for a reason. Because it is the only thing that the market can get itself involved in. Because it can't use price to do so. Because 
that's the price isn't consistent, right? The price can't sit at 100, at 100, at 100, and never move, because that doesn't make money. The only consistent thing in the market is time, right? Market opens and closes at the exact same time every day. So that doesn't change. So that's how you, that's what you base your algorithm off of is time itself. Because that's the only constant in the and again, you can even see even something like this. The imbalance that's left here, notice how it trades back up into it. Again, this one's more of a reaction style trade. So something more advanced that you shouldn't be doing right now, but you can see how it slams into it, a green imbalance, just to do what? So it can reprice high. You want to be a buyer in this. When it is selling hard like this in an imbalance, you want to be a buyer. Now, if, if, if it's the opposite, you know, if it's something like this where you're ripping it hard into a sell side imbalance, you want to be a seller. Of course, right? But again, this is not an hourly, so this stuff is every time frame, everywhere, always and forever. It's not going anywhere anytime soon, I promise. You look at If you go look at like an old chart from 2017, you're going to see the same shit. It's so creepy. It's not creepy. It's just, cra it's just crazy. It really is. Because it's just the same thing. On repeat clockwork all the time so how this relates to gaps is this is a very very similar thing if you're looking at Boeing and gaps and say oh Baba hello well, let's look at Baba anyway fuck it I want to look at Baba. <gasps> yeah, oh my god all right we're gonna look at Baba instead of BA so again any kind of gap in an equity is also considered a imbalance right so it's an area that needs to be repriced and rebalanced to because it's in a it's inefficient price action that's the whole reason that imbalances are filled is because you're not allowing everyone that wanted to participate participate so anyone that wanted to be a buyer from was like 104 to 108 basically they were not allowed to buy this price gapped up above them and they weren't allowed to participate so it's going to do what reprice reprice it so that way anyone that wanted to be a buyer here can and then it'll do whatever it needs to do after. Same thing kind of here. Anyone that wanted to be a buyer in here, this huge imbalance that rips up at four in the morning gets repriced completely in like two hours. The entire move up gets repriced. The imbalance in here that's left behind from here to here, same thing, look space between three candles. What do we got here? Boom. Imbalance, what does it do? Reprice it. Fills it and then reprice it to whatever direction it needs to go. Gap here. Guess what the gap does? It gets filled here. Every single gap is an imbalance. It's just when you can't see. That's the big difference. Is you can't see it. Okay, you can okay, you can see it, but not in the sense that there's a candle. It's just literally a blank space. Kind of like in here, blank space. Notice how it does what? This whole thing at four just reprices all of it to fill all this imbalance slash gap that's here. Reprices all of it. Gap here, what does it do? Look at it. Reprices all of it. This is how gaps are traded and filled. And this is why gaps always gaps don't have to fill immediately, but they will fill. They will always fill eventually. Always, always, always will fill. Same thing here. Gap right here. What does it do? Fills it. Gap here. What does it do? It fills it twice. Whatever wasn't here gets filled again. Imbalance right here from this gap, it gets filled up immediately. Gap here. What does it do? It gets filled. There's a reason it's going to look like the same, and it's doing the same thing every single time, is because it is. Right? And if there's any ga gap here, what does it do? Get repriced and filled. So you're looking for imbalances, not necessarily... Well, you're looking for gaps as places to eventually return to, and this gap will get filled. I'm telling you right now, this gap will get filled eventually. I don't... Like I say, it doesn't have to be immediate fill, but it will do it eventually. Most legendary example, UP. Fucking SD, dude. The gaps. Oh my god. I think we all know these gaps. Wait. Where are they? Oh, I have extended on rest in peace. Let me extend it off. Yeah. Okay. Alright. This gap will get filled, I promise you. Anyways. Oh, oh I need more data. Need more data. Need more data. Alright, because remember the. So, same thing. UPST. The gap that it had off earnings before it had like the bull run to four fucking nine. <laughs> no, my. Oh no, four. It went to four. It went to four nine. I can't do this. Anyways, so the gap here barely fills it. Barely just does a little. I don't know. I don't even know if this fills it. I'm not concerned. But the point is, this gap that was left, it eventually got filled. It took a while, 
It took months and months and months. This is March of 21. And the gap at 80, at 81, filled January of 20, January 22. You're talking, this gap took nine months to fill, but what did it do? It filled itself. That's what's important. Will 300 spy fill? Yes, it has to. It can be a while. It ain't got to be tomorrow. But it, 300 will eventually fill. Now, there are theoretical limits to this only because, only because, spy or something like that can only go so low, right? No, if we saw spy at $100, we would not be here. We we would be here, but we wouldn't be we wouldn't be having the jolly old time that we're having right now, right? So the gap will eventually fill. UPST should see 320 fill one day. When I don't know, and again, it could ne not that it can't never fill, but it's gonna feel like an eternity, right? We had nine months of price action, or no, like ten, like ten months of price action. The gap just didn't fucking fill at all, because I remember. And I'm sure other people remember, everyone was trying to short this. Everyone and their mother was trying to short this at 125 because they're like, this is too high. Every person got squeezed, 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 and squeezed on the up, on the up mark of it, on the markup of it. Trying to fill a gap that it will, like I said, it will fill in time, but it'll do it when it wants to. Best prime example of something more recent is ES and NQ from last week. Prime. Okay, everyone, everyone remember this gap from Sunday Futures Open. Everyone remembers this. The gap down, the true gap down that existed, which is rare in Futures, I'll admit. A true gap in like where you open up, because the only time you can open is Sunday. So you open Sunday and, you know, trade lower, etc. So everyone and their mother wanted this gap to eventually fill, which it did. But again, if you were going into FOMC or anything last week looking for it to fill, it just never did it. When did it do it? It did it the week after. So yes, it eventually filled, but it did it when it felt like it. And that's how it, that's always what it's going to do when it feels like it, not when we feel like it. But again, everyone recognizes where, when the gap is or where it is. But every gap is going to fill. It has to. Because otherwise it's inefficient. Think about it. Would you, If you were to go long right now, would you rather have five shares long, or would you rather have 500 shares long? If you leave an imbalance, you're not letting people participate and sell into you to fill your buys, so your order is literally small and you're making less money. Why would you ever want that? Right? Same, exact, same kind of thing. Gotcha. How much did I lose first trade? I'll just do it with this. Plus two and plus the first trade call. Oh, there we go. Ew. Ew. I think the dollar's about to fucking shit on my lung again. Oh, Lord. Alright, whatever. Anyways. But yeah, it's, it's a much more common thing in equities. Trading futures gaps, like I said, they're non existent. I, that gap that existed was very, very rare. But like BA, the gap that existed in here, it all it did was to get filled. Actually, I got my, actually I can show you my most legendary gap. It was my favorite gap fill of all time. It is my most favorite gap of all time. Tesla. If you remember this day, it was. Was this? That was this. Yeah. Twenty twenty two. New Year starts off. Their Q. Fuck. Was it Q one? Was that Q four? I don't know. Whatever Q that was. I think it was Q4. Their Q4 deliveries come out and they're gold and they're fucking pristine and Tesla's fucking running like a madman. It gaps up 70 fucking dollars, right? It does what? Notice the gap. Do it on a daily. Ah, here we go. Alright. Gap up in here. Low of this. Oops, it's over here. Uh -huh. Alright, here we go. I was wondering, yeah, because I said the gap's at 1280. Okay, Tesla. I talk about it all the time because it's such a pristine fucking moment why these gaps are so crazy and why they always fill. This low from the November the 5th, the low of it is 1208. There's a gap here, right? 
from 1208 from 1197 to 1208. This gap partially fills here. The high of this is 1201, so it almost fills it. There's still like six dollars left, or whatever. There's like six bucks left, whatever the fuck it was. So what does it do? It uses Q4 deliveries on the gap up to do what? Just to fill this gap. This low is 1208. This high of this candle is 1208. It filled this gap to the penny. To the actual penny, this gap got filled off their Q4 deliveries. Right? So they're gonna use, you're gonna realize something that they're gonna use news as an excuse to move price where they want to. They're gonna use it as kind of a smoke screen to get it where they want to go. Right? That's the same reason you see FOMC just fucking whipsaw everybody out is because that's their time to do it because now they're allowed to do it. They can, they've they always been able to move price that aggressively whenever they want to. It just doesn't make sense because now there's no one participating in that because it's moving so fast. But when you have something like big news, etc., or like an earnings report, that's why earnings reports are such fucking hard gambles sometimes or like all the time, it's because they're using the earnings report as a reason to move the price where they need to go. It's the same reason they, they use... Tesla is such glorious Q4 deliveries as the excuse to fill it up just to 12 weight to the fucking penny, dude. To the actual penny, they use it to fill the gap on this. Now again, you should be able to see, if you pause the video, you should be able to see in here the gap, the gaps in this daily chart already. You can kind of see how they're already getting filled, right? And kind of circle them for you as well. It's even in here. So we, we talk about the first gap. There's a gap here. Notice how it gets filled. Even if it doesn't get filled, it gets filled on this candle. The gap that exists here, it gets filled way later. And again, this is a daily chart. So this is 20 something. This took like a month. This took like three weeks to fill, but it filled, right? Gap here, what it do? Fills it. Imbalance that's left in here, right? The space between three candles trades up into it. And what does it do? Notice how it takes out this high by like a fucking penny. I can only tell because it's a different color, so I know it took out the high. I just don't know by how much. But I know that it took out the high. So it takes out this high to do what? Catch the shorts so people can get involved from the buy side liquidity flooding the market. So again, that imbalance stuff that I was talking about on Dixie on the three minute. We were talking about, when we were talking about the initial imbalance lessons, that was on the three minute. This is on a daily chart on Tesla. So it's super important to realize this shit has been happening everywhere all the time forever. Always. And it's not going anywhere. And this is what's going to keep happening. Is these gaps are going to get filled because it's inefficient. Why would you want an inefficient market? You want an efficient market. You want everyone that wants to participate to be able to participate. Why? So you can take their money. If you only got five participants in the market. It's the only people that. Once you take those four other people's money. Well now you got no more. Now you got no more money to take. Now if you can get 500 people in the market. All of a sudden, now you got 499, you know, people to steal from, essentially. So that's why these gaps have to fill, is because anyone that wanted to sell here or buy here, in this case, is now allowed to participate because it came back to their price. Or, for example, have you ever seen how people won't buy something unless, because it sounds counterintuitive, why would, you know, why would you want to be buying something at a certain level? But think about it, people also won't buy something if it's not high enough, right? So, like, let's say you wouldn't want to buy Tesla unless it's over a thousand. So, if you gap down under a thousand, anyone that wanted to buy it over one thousand isn't allowed to participate because what was my rule? My rule was I'm not going to buy it until unless one thousand, unless it trades above one thousand, which it did. It it gapped below it, so I'm not going to get in. So, what's it going to do? It's going to reprice it, reprice that gap, that imbalance, gap slash imbalance. So I'm allowed to participate. So now I'm in the market, so I can do what? I have my money stolen. And again, this is on a daily chart Tesla. And we just talked about on Baba. And again, see this gap here, notice how it fills. See this gap here, notice how it fills. See this gap here, notice how it fills. And again, this is Tesla daily. Check this out. You see the imbalance right here? Boom to boom. Space between three candles. Buys up into it hard. If you remember what I was talking about on Dixie, you want to be a buyer or a seller on the opposite close. If you're ripping into a sell side imbalance, you want to be a seller. Because that's what is probably going to happen. Is they're just buying it up to allow, again, just like we were talking about, if you want to buy it over 1000 these are for the people that want to buy it over 950 So anyone that buys this over 950 thinking it's some kind of breakout, etc., they're now allowed to participate because it's repricing into that. And all it's doing is just filling the old cells that existed here so it can do what? Reprice lower. 
So that exact thing that I was talking about in Tasa, we are now we're now seeing it right here, with the whole kind of one thousand hypothetical, one thousand price hypothetical. And again, I didn't know. I mean, I I did know, but like I didn't. I'm just kind of scrolling through price. But you can see how you can see things live like this with the sort of back testing methodology of you can you will start to see this thing over and over and over and over on repeat forever. And all it takes is for you to see it once. And once you see it, that's all this is all you will see. And you will not see anything else. And again, this is Tesla. This is the monster stock that likes to fucking whiplash, do whatever, all this stuff. This is one of the biggest options markets in the world. Like the only the, I think the only thing bigger than this are the actual indexes in Tesla. Like Spy and QQ are the only things bigger, I wanna say. All right, so chill is done, so I am done. Yeah, it's gonna be, and also I guarantee the scalp will fill. I guarantee you the scalp will fill. Whatever this is, I'll mark it for you for the end of the video. I guarantee the scalp fills. I don't have to, I don't know when. I do not know when, and that's not the point. You need to understand though that the scalp will fill. Because that is what's important. All right, man.